Welcome back. Today, inshallah, we'll continue with the life story of the legendary Sayyida Aisha, and we are still in Medina. And Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As asked the Rasulullah ﷺ this question. Who is the most beloved person to you, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, Aisha. Imagine. And then he said, what about from the men? And here scholar says he was hoping his name will be called. And he said, Abiha, her father. What a woman she was that the Rasulullah ﷺ, even when he wanted to mention a man, he didn't mention the name of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Rather, he said, her father. What a love what he had for her. And then look at the love she had for him. And this is actually in all the books. This is the beauty of Islam that teaches us even the daily life issues or the daily life incidents. And one night, he was standing up in Salah, alayhi salatu wasalam, and they lived in a small room. And then as he was standing, her, her feet came close to his feet. And when he finished, he looked at her and he said, leave me with my Lord, with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She looked at him and says, I just love you, Ya Rasulullah, and I want to be close to you. Love and passion and compassion. One day he looked at her and says, I know when you are happy with me and I know when you are upset with me. And she said, how is that? He said, when you're happy with me, you're going to say, by the Lord of Muhammad. And if you are not happy with me, you will say, by the Lord of Ibrahim. And she said, by Allah, it's only my tongue which doesn't say your name, but your name is in my heart. And my heart will never let you go. Alayhi salatu wasalam, and may Allah be pleased with her. Her knowledge was unique, impeccable, and many of the rulings that we know these days came because of Sayyida Aisha. One of them is a tayammum, using or the permissibility of using dust instead of water in certain circumstances. That was actually the verse in the Quran was revealed because of an incident happened with Sayyida Aisha. Another thing she narrated that this deen, you don't have to do a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Rather, do one or two things, but be persistent. She narrated this hadith. أحب الأعمال إلى الله The most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one أدومها وإنقل The one that is done persistently, constantly, even if they were little. One of the questions she asked Rasul she wanted to learn and she wanted to do things with perfection. She had a gift and she had two neighbors and said, Ya Rasulullah, who do I send the gift? She had one gift. To whom I send the gift? To the one on the right or the one to the left? And he said, and this is something we all now learned, the one that their door is closest to your door. Another ruling we learned through her questions and through her eagerness to learn. She is actually the number one in the list of the women who narrated hadith from Rasul. It's recorded that she narrated 2,210 hadiths. And she is number five in the whole sequence of those who narrated hadith, which is number one, Sayyidina Abu Huraira, Abdullah ibn Umar, and then she comes in and then she is number five. One of the questions she asked Rasul wasalam, and we women these days want that. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, the men took the best reward. They go for fighting and we don't. And we want that reward, competition in Akhirah. And he responded, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he said, لَكُنَّ أَفْضَلُ الْجِهَادِ حَجٌ مَبْرُورٌ You have the best act of jihad without going out for fighting. And that is حَجٌ مبرور. Hajj, that is مبرور, excellent, with no faults.
everyone who is blessed with a blessing or a two or three will be tested. And that's the rulings and that's the sunnah of this life. And of course, being the most beloved to Rasul and the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and the most knowledgeable woman, beautiful, smart, the test will be as hard as it can be to any woman in this day and age. The story actually is narrated by her. She narrated her story, how she went through this test. And the test started like that. When Rasul usually go out for an expedition, he usually take one or more of his wives. And he took her this time. On their way back, she needed to go and relieve herself. And in that day and age, there were not facilities as we have. They usually go somewhere a little bit far and private. So she went. She was wearing a necklace which belongs to her sister, Asma. So she went to relieve herself. As she was coming back, she noticed she lost it. So she went back again, looking for that necklace. By the time she found it, she came back, and guess what? The caravan went. And when you read the story, they, they say she was so thin and petite, and they were on top of the camel inside a covered room in the camel. They didn't feel the difference in weight, and they moved. And she was alone in the desert. This tells you how courageous she was. She stayed, and she said to herself, someone is going to come. And from the habit of Rasul he usually, whenever there is a caravan, he appoint one person to be in the back after a distance. So when he coming, following the caravan, in case someone is there or they lost something, he'll find it. And that's exactly what happened. And Safwan is a companion, came in with his camel and found her. And this is before the verse of hijab, where the wives of Rasul their face was completely covered. So he knew her. She described it like this. He didn't even look at me. And he only coughed. And I stood up and I found him. And he brought the camel and he put his hand and he didn't look at me. And I was able to get on the camel and he drove till we get to Medina. As they entered the Medina, who saw them? Abdullah ibn Ubay, the leader of al Munafiqeen. And he said a word, by Allah, there's something between them. And from one mouth to the other, from one person to the other, it became the talk of the town. Tomorrow, inshallah, we will continue with another milestone of the legacy of this woman. Oh.